Hi, I'm Carlos. I'm a software engineer in the Conditional Access team. Hi, I'm Daniel, and I'm a program manager on the Conditional Access team. Today, Carlos and I are really excited to share some ninja skills for conditional access policy management. Admins are increasingly reliant on conditional access to keep their organization secure. Having talked with dozens of customers about their strategies and workflows, we know that every organization is different. The skills and tools Carlos and I are going to highlight today are designed to empower every organization to achieve more with conditional access. With the newly released conditional access APIs, the enhancements to the Azure AD logs, and the integration with Azure Monitor, we've made it possible to integrate and automate conditional access with the whole suite of Microsoft services, from Logic Apps to Teams, and even third-party services such as Slack. This means you can shift from managing individual policies in the portal to robust automated workflows at an enterprise scale, like the ones you'll see today. And to show you all of this, we're going to demo the entire lifecycle of a policy using strictly automated workflows. We're going to assume that you're already familiar with conditional access. First, we'll demo the safe rollout of a policy using the Quick Start template in pre-production, and we'll move it to a production tenant in report-only mode. Then we'll show you how to monitor and troubleshoot your policy, and we'll set an alert on policy changes. Lastly, we'll show you how to do version control and policy backup. Now, Carlos will walk you through deploying a policy with safe rollout. Let's show how to create automated workflows using conditional access APIs. We created several conditional access templates to easily deploy policies to your organization. You can find them in the first link shown in the slide. The second link contains step-by-step -step instructions to deploy scripts to empower several automated scenarios like backup and restore of policies, break glass automation, safe rollout of policies, and many more. As an example, we'll demo the use of Office 365 template that we see here in the slide. You can see how can we easily create a policy to protect access to Office 365 applications. This is a super convenient construct to unify the access to Office resources within a single policy. We have seen a great adoption of the Office 365 assignment with over 7 million monthly active users so far. For this demo, we'll execute a safe rollout of a conditional access policy. We will use logic apps to demonstrate some of the automation you can achieve in your tenant. We will start with the migration of a policy from our pre-production tenant to our production tenant using automated scenarios that integrate with OneDrive for Business. Then we will demonstrate how our conditional access APIs can be integrated with Microsoft Teams to require approval from the security team before the new policy is created in the production environment. The first part of the demo involves creating a policy in our test tenant. So let's just copy paste the template that we will use. I'm using Graph Explorer logged in as my admin of my test tenant. And the template is the same that we saw. It's an Office 365 application for all users to require MFA or compliant device. We hit the conditional access endpoint, and then we create our policy. Assuming everything went as expected in your test tenant and you tested all the scenarios that you are interested, let's see how we can manipulate the policy from our pre-production tenant into our production tenant. So for that, we have created in our production environment this application that has a couple of permissions. In particular, it has application permission to read write conditional access, read my policies, and the audit logs. So now what we need to do is consent for this application to exist on our test tenant so that it has the same permissions and we can manipulate policies in both tenants with the same application. So what we need to do is we need to build the consent URL and we're going to use it in our test tenant to make sure the application is consented. So we can see here that it's requesting the same permissions that we have in our production tenant. So I'm going to accept. And then our application has been created in our test environment. So let's uh, summarize what we want to do. We have already an application that can access both tenants, my pre-production tenant and production tenant. And we want to copy the conditional access policy from our pre-production tenant into production. Now, remember, the policy was enabled in my test tenant. And I don't want to copy a policy enabled for all the users. I want to switch it to report-only mode. So let's try to do all of that with Azure Logic Apps. 
So I have here my one of the scripts that you can deploy in your environment. Let me run it so that it starts while I explain what, what it does. So let's go step by step. My application is running as application only, so it needs a secret to run. I have created a key vault to store the secret. So this workflow will try to fetch the secret from a key vault. Once it has the secret, it will invoke the API. And the API, you can parameterize what you show here. You can parameterize which tenant it goes. So in this particular case, it is trying to get all my conditional access policies from my test tenant. Once it is able to get them, it will parse the content and it will just copy everything into my OneDrive for Business. Okay, we can see here we have our PPE folder in OneDrive for Business and the policy has been created. It's the same policy that we have in our test environment. So now what we need to do is we want to change this from enable to report only mode and then create it in our production tenant. So what we have here, it's a new script that performs that operation. Let's run it and take a look to what it will do. We have configured this to trigger based on an event. So when I copy my policy to my production folder, okay, I just copy the file and see, it immediately trigger. Basically, this workflow is waiting for a file to be present on my production folder. It parses everything that was on the policy, and then it, it's waiting for a response from my Microsoft Teams security alerts. So let's take a look. Here we see a security alert, and the security alert says, hey, somebody's trying to copy a conditional access policy from PPE to production. Do you accept? So you say, yeah, I'm going to approve this. Okay, now my decision is noted. If I go back to my workflow, this step has completed. And now, see what happens here. I uh, The same process to set up my application with the secret happens, gets the secret from Key Vault, and then it will modify the contents of the file to switch to report-only mode. This is an important step because we don't want to enable a policy for all users in production like that. It's important to set it in report-only mode and then analyze the impact. And then our conditional access policy now has been created. Let's verify that. If we go to the security conditional access tab, we can see that our policy has been created in report-only mode. Imagine the world of possibilities that this technology traction will bring to your organization. For this demo, we decided to use products in the Microsoft 365 umbrella and Azure Logic Apps. But the Conditional Access APIs can be integrated with any other system. For example, your own LOB apps and third-party vendors or support ticketing systems, etc. That way, you can achieve the flexibility and customization that your organization demands. Now that Carlos deployed our policy to the production environment in report-only mode, we want to understand the impact of the policy before enabling it. Using the new Conditional Access Insights and Reporting Dashboard, we'll take a look at how many users meet the requirements of our policy, requiring MFA or a compliant device, and then troubleshoot one of the signings. In the Insights and Reporting Dashboard, we can see an overview of sign-ins in our tenant over the last 24 hours or any other time range. Here, we can choose seven days because we want to allow enough time to gather data on users signing in. We can also change the data view to look at the number of sign-ins instead of the number of users. Under the conditional access policy parameter, let's go ahead and search for the name of our policy. Require MFA or compliant device to access Office 365 in report-only mode. Now let's take a look at the summary to understand the policy's impact. Total shows how many sign-ins there have been where the policy was evaluated. Success shows how many sign-ins access an Office app and either already performed MFA or used the compliant device. Failure shows how many sign-ins tried to sign into an Office app but failed MFA, and this is expected to be zero because report-only mode doesn't prompt users for MFA. User action required shows how many sign-ins tried to sign into an Office app from a device that wasn't compliant, and so they would have been prompted for MFA. And the not applied tile shows how many users signed into an app not belonging to the Office app group. 
This view shows us that most of the users trying to access Office apps are doing so without a compliant device or performing MFA. Let's take a look at the users that were successful. Most of them came from unmanaged devices, which implies that they already satisfied MFA and had an MFA claim in their token. We can also see a breakdown by device platform, which client apps were used, sign-in risks, and where the sign-ins were occurring from. And then the application section shows us which apps are part of the Office app group, and that's why the policy would have applied. When we scroll down, we can see additional sign-in details, such as which user signed in the most. And if we click on a user, we can see his or her sign-in events over here on the right. Now suppose you're a help desk admin troubleshooting an individual sign-in, and you want to know exactly why the policy applied the way it did. We'll go to the sign-in logs and click on the new policy details blade. So here in the sign-in logs, let's search for a particular user. We'll look for Logan. And we'll select one of Logan's sign-ins to the Office portal. When the details pane opens, we can see a couple of tabs, including the conditional access tab and the reported only tab. These let you know exactly why policies applied the way they did. So let's go ahead and select on the name of our policy, require MFA or compliant device to access Office 365. And we can see the result right up at the top, report only user action required. Now remember, this policy applies to all users accessing apps as part of the Office 365 app group. So therefore, it would make sense that Logan signing in satisfied the user assignment. And when he signed into the Microsoft Office 365 portal, that satisfied the application assignment. We can see the other conditions were not configured, but we can note that under the device state section, Logan didn't come from a compliant device. And therefore, it would make sense that he was prompted for MFA when signing in. The insights and reporting dashboard and the policy details blade together give admins both a telescope and a microscope to understand the impact of their policies, analyze gaps in policy coverage, and troubleshoot unexpected signings. Now that we understand how the policy will impact our users, we can go ahead and enable the policy in production. Next, we want to show you a simple and powerful tool to alert admins about changes to their conditional access policies or other important sign-in events, such as a break glass account being used. When someone makes a change to a conditional access policy, the last person you want to learn about it from is really your help desk, especially after users have already been impacted. By leveraging Azure AD's integration with Azure Monitor and Azure Alerts, you can receive customized notifications whenever audit log or sign-in events that you define occur. To get started, let's go to the Azure AD logs blade and we'll define a query to look for any changes to our conditional access policies. We'll look through the audit logs and filter by results where the logged by service was conditional access and where the operation was called update conditional access policy. We can click run to see any of the results and we can see that a policy must have been changed in the last four hours. So now we'll go over to the right hand side and create a new alert rule. Notice that Azure Alerts pre-populates the workspace that we were just using. Under the condition section, we can configure when the alert will fire. And we can see that our query is already pre-populated. Next, we'll define the alert logic so that an alert is fired if the number of results of our query is greater than a threshold value of zero. The time range for our query will be five minutes and we'll search again every five minutes. We can also see that the estimated monthly cost for this alert is only $1.50. Next, we have to configure an action group who will receive the notifications. So select action group. And I've already created one here called conditional access admins. If we take a look at that group, we can see that the members are configured to receive email and text message notifications. Now, all that's left to do is customize a couple of things. We can create an email subject over here. And we can name the alert rule. OK. And that's all we have to do. We can go ahead and create the alert rule. 
To test out our alert rule, we'll go to the Graph Explorer to make a change to a conditional access policy using the new conditional access APIs. In this example, let's issue a patch where we're updating the grant control for a policy to be a block. When we run the query, we should be able to see whether the patch was successful. Now let's skip ahead a few minutes and I'll check my email and we should receive an alert. So here in my email, we can see that we received an alert. There's been an update to one of our conditional access policies. With this capability, admins can configure all sorts of alerts. Imagine getting a text message whenever the percent of sign-in failures in an hour exceeds 50%, or whenever break glass accounts with admin privileges are used. Automating this workflow makes responding to changes in your environment so much easier. One of the key improvements with the usage of conditional access APIs is reflected in the audit logs. Now you can see the before and after of a policy when it changed and the data is available in the same JSON representation as the conditional access policy templates. So you have all the details of what changed. We hear about your scenarios around governance where auditing changes to conditional access policies is essential to meet your compliance requirements. The following demo will make use of the improved audit logs to keep track of our policy changes using the versioning in SharePoint. For this demo, I have prepared this conditional access policy to demonstrate the versioning in SharePoint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a small change to change it from report only modes to disabled. Then run it. And OK, my policy now has changed. Let's take a look to another workflow that we have. We have deployed this script. And what it will do is every minute, it will go back in time to check all the changes that happened to conditional access policies 10 minutes ago. So we run it. And then after 10 minutes, we should see a new version of the policy in SharePoint. So now uh, 10 minutes have passed after I made the change. So let's take a look. Our uh, workflow is set up to look at audit logs 10 minutes ago for periods of one minute, it will fetch the secret of my application that has access to audit logs, and then it will query the audit logs API. Once it finds the data that has changed, it will create a new version in my SharePoint OneDrive for Business. So let's take a look. I have here my backup folder where I was storing all the versions. So if I look at the version history, I can see that three minutes ago, I changed something. So now we can compare what changed between the latest iteration and the previous one. So let's do this. I just downloaded the previous version. I'm going to format it a little bit so that it shows it shows a little bit better. OK, let's compare what changed. Here we have our previous version. And here we have our folder with our most updated version. So when we try to compare, we can see that the change, right? We can see when it was last modified and where the change from report only modes to disabled. With this capability, you can restore policies to a previous known state if needed. All the version history containing every single change, now it's available to you. Now that you've had a chance to see the power of automated workflows and integrations with conditional access APIs, here are some resources to get started now. Check out the repository of quick start policy templates. This includes policies like require MFA for admins and require trusted devices to access an app. Explore the library of CA automation scripts. You can deploy any of the scripts we demo today to your Azure environment. Review your policies to see if it makes sense to include the Office app group to your policies, rather than including individual Office applications. Before enabling your policies in production, test out your policies in report-only mode to assess their impact. We also recommend streaming your Azure AD sign-in and audit logs to Azure Monitor, so you can easily dig into your logs with log analytics and workbooks. And lastly, create a simple alert to let your admins know whenever changes to your policies are made. We hope these tools empower your organization to achieve more with conditional access. And thanks for watching.